The cheerleader. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Benny. Hi. How are you, darling? Doing very well. Welcome back. Thank you. Feels good to be back. I just came back from the Palouse. Go Cougs. Whoop, 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 whoop. Well, How's the fam I'm... out there? What was that? How's the fam out there? Good. Tall. <laughs> yeah, right? They're all so much taller than you me. You grew them. <laughs> yeah, six, two, six, three. I don't know. They're all, they're, it's crazy. I know. It's crazy. And Morgan, the middle one, she just kept growing. She, and so she basically, you're like... the shortest in the family now. Then right? I am now the shortest. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a trip. And that's at 5'11". Well, six foot, I've shrunk, but yeah, whatever. We won't get into that. <laughs> yeah. This isn't about height. Anyways, <laughs> unless we're talking potential, we are going to be unlocking potential. What does that mean? What does it look like? You guys know that uh, I love and I, I, I search out mindset hacks and tools for real time, real life, and to break down the whole personal development uh, Rubik's cube, because I know when I'm in fight or flight, my nervous system is going wonka doodle. I do not need a Rubik's cube. I need something simple. I need something easy. And that's what we're going to do today. So if you're interested in unlocking your potential, if you're interested in talking about some intuition and in business and personal, what that looks like, discerning what that looks like, prioritizing what that looks like with boundaries, that's what we're going to get into today. And anything and everything that you do on a personal level is going to have an evolution and also mirror for a professional level as well. So it's really important that we do the inside work so you can show up on the outside as well. All right. So you guys know who I am. I'm Sue Lundquist with the Gratitude Cafe, and I want to welcome all of you aboard. Um, again, shedding old beliefs and old experiences and fears and stuff that are attached to that. If you guys would like to be a part of my coaching program, please, I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to do the online C2C, which is craziness to clarity, please do that. You can do that on the website. If you would like to get a copy of the newsletter, a copy of the show, all of that juicy stuff, of course, go to sulanquist.com forward slash newsletter and I'm not spamming. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just giving you juicy content. We pull cards just to set the intention and, you know, quite honestly, to noodle. And I cannot tell you how many times I've either pulled a card or found some kind of inspirational quote of something that just hit not only myself right smack in the head, but also my clients too, because I share that with them as well. And it's just the timing is impeccable. So thank you, Gus. Gus is God, universe, source, spirit be purple chopsticks, if that's what you want to call it, showing up as the amazing you. So today I have Laura Noel, and we are going to be unlocking potential. We're going to talk about what that means. I'm going to, of course, do the formal introduction, and then I am going to bring her on. And you guys are going to get all the juicy information, get to know her like I do each week. So Laura Noel, is an executive business and personal development consultant who works with organizations and individuals to help streamline business processes while maximizing profits. She helps clients stretch their thinking in a way that opens them up to new possibilities. Prior to becoming an entrepreneur and a CEO of her own company, Laura studied a and taught personal growth, change management, and leadership for over 27 years while serving in the United States Air Force. And thank you very much, Laura. Uh, she has helped solidify goals and improve corporate culture within government agencies, the Department of Defense, and construction, technical insurance, and sales organization. She is, a pr she is proud to serve as a transformational coach, helping clients bridge the gap between feeling stuck and finding fulfillment in life and career. Let's get some results, Laura. Welcome to the Gratitude Cafe. I'm, I could keep going and going and going, but I want the audience to hear you and get to know you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I've been looking yeah. forward to this for a long time. So I'm always on board with having these deep conversations with people who really get this stuff and, um, and you're being of service, right? Yes. Yes. Well, welcome aboard. So military background too. I'm curious yeah. how this all started. Well, you jump in, you into it and figure out where you'd like to jump in 27 years. It's been a bit, right? <laughs> yeah. It's 27 years went by really fast. And during those 27 years, I knew at some point my military career would end. And so as a result, I was collecting degrees and certifications thinking, 
well, I'll land on my purpose. I'll just, you know, follow my curiosity and I'll get there. But with every step, with every degree, with every certification, I wasn't really landing on my purpose. And when I knew that I had three more years left to hit 30 years, because I'd reach um, a certain level in my military career, I could have stayed in for 30 years. I was like, oh my gosh, the writing's on the wall. I have to retire from the service, but who am I? And what do I want to be when I grow up? And I didn't have that answer. So I started um, getting into yoga teaching. I, that was one of my uh, last certifications as I was getting ready to transition out. And when I got certified in yoga, I also took a yoga philosophy course, which really got into the mindset of yoga and the energy and the power behind that. And I started teaching at my work center just for friends and colleagues. And I noticed how they would shift in how they felt, how they um, communicated, um, how they felt in their body and in their mind. And I thought, my gosh, if I could bottle this up, and in a curriculum and teach it to people. Not, and I love yoga. I love the physical asana practice of yoga, but I wanted to focus on the mindset piece. But once I made that decision that I wanted to bottle it up is when I met my mentor. And instead of retiring in three years, like I was planning, I ended up retiring in three months and started on this journey of serving people. So once I got clear and I got, you know, mentorship, things just started to happen really quickly. I love that. Well, welcome. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. And it, it and I think you would agree it's all it's internal work, right? It's an inside job. It really really is. Yes. Um and I know when you are you me and there's trauma, there's fight or flight, there is that adjective to describe whatever's happening in your life. Uh it's hard to discern, it's hard to f- pick up the pieces and even figure out what to do. And is my brain even effectively working what that even looks like? And I, and I walk the talk cause I, I, I mean, I've been there. I know what that feels like. So let's talk about, and I love, I love your language landing on my purpose, just kind of rolling with it and trying to figure it all out. Talk to us about um, mindset and the importance of mindset, keeping us small versus trusting in the expansion and loving on yourself enough to move forward and expand. Did I communicate that effectively? <laughs> yeah, I think so. And hopefully I answer it effectively. I, you know, I'm thinking about, I was, before I started getting into mindset work specifically, I, I, by other people's standards, I was already successful in my career. Um, however, I was playing small because I was making decisions and setting goals that were based on what I already knew and what I've done in the past. And so when I started working with a mentor and honestly, I was very goal oriented. I was a goal seeking organism, you know, one thing after the other. And when I learned how to set goals properly, um, setting goals based on my wants and desires and not on my past credentials, my past experiences, my past traumas, mistakes, challenges, none of that matters. It's irrelevant. When I started focusing on, gosh, if I could have anything I wanted, if I could wave that magic wand and there were no obstacles, what would that be? And I started imagining myself there. It was a different way of setting goals as opposed to what we learn in school, like smart goals. We learn their specific, measurable, attainable, realistic. Um, I've heard that, that word for that ac- acronym. Um, but I started being unrealistic and setting goals based on a vision of my dream. And once I started doing that, um, that just opened everything up for me. And I understood the idea of you're not going to know how you're going to reach that goal. And if you do, then you're playing small. That's a telltale sign. And so you really have to have trust that in, in yourself or there's something bigger at play that has your back when you take that leap. Ooh, wait, you got it. Cause there was a little nugget in there. What did you say, Laura? You said, if you already know what's going to happen, you're still playing small. Like you languaged it a little bit different. Can you repeat that? Cause that was really, yes. really cool. Yep. If you set a goal and you know how you're going to get to that goal, the how it's too small, too small. You've got to trust. Yep. Oh, the trust. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
That's yeah, the challenge. I, oh, it is. I've got this whole conversation about taking a leap of faith over the last few years for myself and that trusting in the unknown, just jumping in and going, all right, here we go. Speaking of that, can we talk a little bit about the intuition and how that plays into personal professional life? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody has God-given gifts and talents, their mental faculties. Intuition is one of them. And we, though, we're in a, in a climate nowadays where we're bombarded with information. We're in information overload. And sometimes it can seem like we have access to all this information, and yet we're doing less or we're accomplishing less. And we're bogged down with all of this clutter and all this noise and mental clutter. You can't hear your intuition through that clutter. And so if you're making decisions based on the clutter or external circumstances, then you're not tapping into your intuition. Intuition is quiet. It's that voice I always say that tells you to bring the umbrella. It's going to rain outside. And you're like, it's sunny. I'm, I don't need it. And then you go outside and it's like, <laughs> you get dumped on, right? <laughs> but we don't listen to it. And so in order for you to tap into it, there, it's non-negotiable. You have to have quiet. You have to be able to hear yourself think and practice listening to your intuition and trusting it and acting on it. And you can do it in little ways to kind of get that mental muscle going. You know, it doesn't have to be, my intuition told me to invest a million dollars here now. Like, you, <laughs> maybe you want to, disclaimer. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, maybe you want to like slow your roll a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're not used to engaging that mental muscle, practice, test it out begin to trust and develop it a little bit (laughs) and reminder you guys it's that little whisper it's not it's and the analogy i've used for years laura you may and and i when i asked the universe for signs and symbols i said you know what i'm done with the grizzly bears i just want butterflies i i and and with that agreement i say to the universe the signs whatever i my agreement to you is i promise i will listen I will quiet my body, my mind, and I will listen to those. So I don't have the grizzly bear smacking me upside the head anymore, right? That's awesome. (laughs) Butterflies. We only want butterflies. Yes. So quiet the mind, quiet the, 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 I call it the drunk monkey, the clutter in the head. Laura's talking about following your intuition. And why is that important? Why, why should we do that? Yeah, your intuition is your it's your inner GPS. It's your inner guidance system. So when you decide you want to reach for a goal, something you want to be, do, or have, and you're being guided by, and you're, it's, you're setting an appropriate goal that it, you're excited and nervous at the same time, you know, you want it, you can see it. You don't know how, you don't know all the steps it's going to take to get there. It requires you to think differently. And, and instead of doing the mechanical sheer grit to get there, which we're limiting ourselves when we do that, we're tapping into something much greater, our source energy, the universe, God, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. Um, When you're allowing that to guide you, when you, I love when Abraham Hicks talks about when you shoot that rocket of desire, I love that phrase, that, that thing that you want, the universe has it, your higher self, God, the universe has it. And so all you have to do is, you know, get emotionally connected with that and then take inspired action that's in alignment with that goal. Um, when we're cluttered in the noise, we're in back in the mechanical and we're letting those things drive us. If we're connected and we're listening to our intuition and we set the destination for this goal, our intuitive guidance system is going to guide us. So even if we make a mistake, And even if we go, oh, circumstance, obstacle, I'm going to try this way for a little bit. Your intuition is rerouting you all the time. So you can always go back to it. You're not going to make a mistake. You're just having, you know, when you, when you don't listen to it and when you allow yourself to get pulled back into circumstances and and allowing yourself to kind of be a plaything for the universe, um, it's okay. Just stop, be present tap back in and you'll get redirected just like you would in your car. But, you know, you have to keep moving. I, you know, I always say your car can't route you or reroute you unless you're moving. 
You can't sit True. still. Yeah. Yeah. And then when it tries to reroute, you've literally, and the perfect example, you have to pull over, stop, be quiet, let it catch up. Great yep. analogy. Great analogy. I love it. Thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. I view, and I love, I love that because you do, you have an inner navigation system and I, I, I love using that and it's universal, right? Everybody yep. knows what that is. Um, Trusting intuition, fear versus not knowing the right choice and that discernment. I keep wanting to go back to that discernment because when people are in that fight or flight, when their nervous system is running havoc and making those choices, how can they, in those moments, truly trust that discernment? I know we kind of noodled on it at the top of the hour, but I, I, I for whatever reason, I want to circle back to that if that's if that'll work with you. Yeah. And I like that you said um, how, when your nervous system kicks in and is like having you do X, Y, and Z, Uh, because it's, it's, it's your, your habitual way of behaving. It's your knee jerk reaction and it's how your brain is wired. So, you know, most of our behavior is habitual and actually that's not a bad thing. If I had to like consciously think I take the toothpaste and I squeeze it with my right hand. (laughs) Like we would just be exhausted. We have, you know, so many decisions are on autopilot about, I think it's like 96 to 98% of all of our behavior is habitual. That's your paradigm running the show. And so um, you want to, when you're in a stress fight or flight situation, that, that automatic decision-making mechanism sort of kicks in and you, you have those knee jerk reactions, but the best thing that you could do is when you notice that you're doing that is stop, pause, and even ask yourself, you know, what am I doing right now? Or how am I feeling right now? What do I need right now? Um, is it what, true? Is it true? That's is it one. true? Oh. Um, yeah. And instead of going, Oh my God, I have a problem. Okay. <laughs> think, <laughs> what's the solution? I mean, not like the how, but what do I want the end result to be? Because that's shifting your brain and your focus away from a problem. And so when you're in that space and you have an idea of visualizing and feeling into that situation, the the wish fulfilled, and you get a download of inspiration, that's your intuition. But when you're stuck in fear and, you know, that automatic response, that fight or flight, that's circumstance driving you. That's fear driving you. And audience, I want you to hear what Laura's saying because it's really important that discernment, and there's an there's a energetic reason why I keep bringing it up because it's a conversation. And I think with everything that's going on in the world and society, we are in fight or flight. We, we've got cell phones beeping at us. We got news and media. We've got in-laws. We've got all these things in our outer world running some havoc on our nervous system. And we've got to be able to discern if we're making the appropriate choice for yourself, right, wrong, or indifferent. When you make a choice, you, and you, we, you had talked about this a minute ago, even though with your navigation system, your intuition is going to guide you back. And the way I look at it, Laura, too, is it's no right or wrong. It's just, you're gaining wisdom regardless. It's a choice, right? And you're always going to come back. And if, if, if you don't, then realign and figure out where your goal or your intended, I use intended outcome for whatever yeah. reason. That's, it's a different language for me. Well, I love that you said that, you know, you're going to get rerouted along the way and they're just lessons learned. But sometimes when we, when we take a direction that we think is pulling us away from our goal, and maybe we, we just listen to the circumstance and allow that to kind of decide for us, our old programming decided for us. If we get all angry and wrapped up in, oh, I messed up, I made a mistake. Well, we're focusing on negative pull thinking. And who knows, that might not have been a mistake. You might have been directed to turn left because you needed a Slurpee at 7-Eleven and you're in line at the 7-Eleven and somebody has the very thing you need to help you create the thing that you want to create. So if you're wrapped up in, I made a mistake, excuse me, then you're not open to the possibility that's right in front of your face. You might be, you might've been guided there. So just be open and just have fun with it. It's just enjoy the journey. 
Oh, I love that. I use, I've, I've coined the world, the CCs, compassionate curiosity. Yeah. Cause you I get compassionate that. and you get curious, you get curious. It takes that sting out of it, right? Just get mm-hmm. playful, get curious, and then have compassion for yourself and the other parties in the situation. And it does. And, and it, it keeps it for myself and my clients. Um, it keeps you in an elevated vibration, an elevated emotion of gratitude. You know what? Instead of getting pissy and upset because you you're at a red light or somebody cut you off, you don't know what the steps are to save your life or to hear what you need to hear. So just be in the butterflies, be in the moments that are just quiet yeah. and honor them and, uh, you know, have, have gratitude for that. Um, well, we've got a couple more minutes. I was thinking maybe Benny, should we take a break? This seems like a good segue. We'll just take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to continue talking to Laura Noel. If you want to get a hold of her, I'm going to give you that information after the commercial break. And I'm going to tease you just a little bit. So with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And if we're live on YouTube, come. we're going to keep chatting over there for about three minutes. Just go to YouTube and type in 11.50 a.m. If you're driving, please don't do that. With that, we will be right back. Sue Lundquist here with the Gratitude Cafe. Cool. Okay. Live on YouTube. I love that. Landing on my purpose. And then you were saying what we were talking about something you said, uh, setting the goal, be, do, have. Yeah. Yes. Love that. Focusing on goals. Talk to me about what's your definition of a goal? I get hung up on that word and, you know, growing up and you've got to have a goal and you've got to have this, it's got in my pattern and I'm Mm -hmm. working on it. That's why I use different language to switch up my nervous system on my brain. It's the intended outcome. It's just a lighter language for me. So I want to, I want to talk about that with you if we could. Yeah, sure. I I love that. You know, the intended, I, I love that um, idea of an intended outcome. I think of a goal, something that you're, that's worthy of you, not something you think you're worthy of. Mm, worthy of you. Oh, I because love that. We are, whether you believe in science or theology, science will say we have a power that's flowing to and through us. And theologians would say there's a power that's flowing to and through us. They would call it spirit. They both call it energy too. So we're only using a small percentage of our brain capacity. So if we are setting goals based on what we, you know, what, what we think we're worthy of, you know, what do we normally base projections on? Or I can do better. We're, oh, I'll do 10% better than I did last year. We're looking in the past, but if we can remember that we're energy in a body and there's no limit to what we can do, then it helps us to kind of see that we can set goals that are worthy of our awesomeness. It's a different mindset shift. Um, and it's kind of like a vision, mm-hmm. a vision with a timeline. You are, you are saying, you know, in a year, you know, this is, this is my dream. This is my vision. And you put a date on it, but what's helped me is I used to set goals and I'm going to do this marathon and this half Ironman and get to this promotion and blah, 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 blah. And I was exhausted because I was all over the place getting all these seemingly big goals. (sighs) But my vision is one vision. And if either the opportunity is in alignment or not, I'm doing far less action, but I'm more effective and more fulfilled in what I'm doing. Okay, hold that thought. Got to bring you back on. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Welcome back. Sue Lundquist here with the Grand Two Cafe. We are live on 11.50 a.m. in the Pacific Northwest. And of course, live on YouTube internationally. I got to say hi to my Swiss. I got to say hi to my Mexico, my Canadians all over the world. Hello, Brazil. Welcome aboard again. Sue Lundquist here with Gratitude Cafe. If you would like a copy of the show, any of this information, please go to suelundquist.com forward slash newsletter. If you would like to get more information, of course, about my guests like Laura herself, 
you're going to have to get the newsletter. Or of course, follow us on all of the social media. You'll see all the posting information there. Worthy of you versus you are worthy of. If you missed that, we had a great conversation on YouTube. So you can go back and you can um, check that out as well. That, I love that. Worthy of you versus you are worthy of X, Y, Z. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, when we set goals that we think usually we'll set goals. And I, I did this too, that either we've done before because we like check boxes, right. And it feels good to get that thing off the list or we'll set goals that we think we can do. And what do we base what we think we can do normally on? what we've done the in the past. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that only allows us to make incremental gains or we're doing something different, but it's the same level of impact. So in, in essence, we keep creating more of the same. Yeah. We don't want to do that. No, yeah. no. And so I think when we understand that, but when we can shift our definition of what a goal is And I love this because Earl Nightingale said this, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Mm. So success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or a worthy outcome, right? And goals, you know, when we're setting goals that we think we can do, we're saying, you know, this goal, I'm worthy of this goal, but that goal should be worthy of our awesomeness. So and this is a good little, little nugget too, guys. If it doesn't come to you, it wasn't meant to be there in the first place, but the things that you have learned along the way are very important to get to you to where source your intended outcome is, is providing for you. So again, right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes you're inspired to do something. Sometimes we set the goal and then we get so locked in on the how oh, I have an idea. Here's a couple of ways I'm going to get to this goal. And that, that'll come to you. You want to set the goal, the vision first, but that's the mechanism for getting to the goal and, or the plan. So the plans might change. So this plan might not work, but it might've taught you something where you can pivot. So plans will change, but if your vision, it's got it, you got to dig deep. It's got to be something that you truly want and desire. It might even make you cry to think of it tears of joy, you know, you're on to something. Then if you can see it, you can have it. That's meant for you, but the how be flexible in how you're getting there. Oh, I love that. Be flexible and compassionate curiosity to CCs. Some really yeah. good truth and anchor words for me are authentic and genuine. It just goes thunk into my body. I'm just like, all right, is that authentic and genuine to me for me? Is it true? Because again, the traumas and the riddles and the drunk monkeys and all that stuff that comes up. I'm in, and I'm audience, I'm going back to a conversation that Laura and I had at the top of the hour about discerning and having the butterflies versus the grizzly bears and discerning what that feels like. And if you have a goal, my language intended outcome, it's just a little lighter for me. And, and I want to have that conversation too, because I've talked to other colleagues and um, clients too. And yes, I use the word intended outcome versus goal, because for me, goal had had kind of a negative bag to it. And that's my pattern. And I'm getting, I, and I fully get that, but there are other people out there. And I wanted to make sure that we had, there's other people out there that also feel the same way because you get riddled in the goals and the, uh, and the, I didn't finish my goal. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, you yeah. an elevated emotion, not a frustrated, resentful emotion, right? Right. Like it's laborious. That's what, yeah. I like that. The desire or desired outcome, um, worthy ideal. I love that. Yeah. Vision worthy of you versus worthy. You are worthy of. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And you're bringing something up. So apparently, or it's something's coming up. So every time you see the W, the worthiness, every yeah. time, every time, like the women's bathroom or a W hotel or something like that, I love stop that. in your moment and say, I am worthy and, yes. and, or a different language that says I'm working on my worthiness, you know, whatever is authentic and genuine to you. Right. Little mindset. I love right? that. I love that. Yes. Isn't that so good? <laughs> I'm writing that down. Yeah, yay! <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> focus on goals based on wants and desires. Ah, oh, and I love Laura was talking about landing on her purpose at the top of the hour and also talking about clutter, clearing the clutter, making sure that you are listening, watching, seeing your inner guidance, that GPS system. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about that inner GPS system. And that's why we have Laura here. She's talking to us about leadership and that unlocking your potential, the how to's, the what to's. Uh, we talked at the top of the hour about mindset traps that are keeping you small and what that looks like. That was a really juicy conversation. And also talking about fear and the discernment, because that is really what's been coming up for me and other clients as well. And, and not myself too, you know, I'll get wrapped up in my, cause I'm walking the talk. I get wrapped up in my fear or something has happened or triggered me. And I'm like, ah, oh, shiitake. <clears throat> How do I discern? Because I yeah. want to stay, my nervous system and my emotions wants to stay angry right now and prove my point, right? Versus what do you say to that, Laura? Because it's, yeah. it's true, right? Oh. Yeah, it, it is. And I think another hack would be when you're faced with fear, I call that the terror barrier. When <laughs> you are um, approaching a challenge and you know there's something blocking you and you feel that fear, when you break through that fear, oftentimes you realize how thin tissue paper thin it was to begin with. But I think one of the things that's helped me is instead of asking, well, what's the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? What's the best outcome? Because it automatically shifts your focus away again from the problem and from, from the fear. And I often say this, you know, fear and faith require you to believe in something you can't see. Mm both of them do. So I'm going to bet on faith every time, faith in myself, faith in the universe, faith in my ability, um, faith in being guided, faith in my intuition. I mean, those are so much more powerful than any circumstance. And it really is a choice. And I love that you said, you know, you ask yourself in a moment, is it true? Is it real? Because even just taking a moment to ask yourself that, woo, it helps you like snap out of it. You know, it oh helps totally you break and that, then that cycle. Yes. And and then there's those times where I'm like, no, I'm gonna sit right here in my pity pot and I'm gonna let the fear come out and I'm gonna let the pity yeah. and the resentment and I'm gonna be upset and mm, but that's yeah. there's there's power in that as well, you know, not yeah. turning, not turning the cheek or denial or any of that. Let's have that yeah. conversation, that denial yeah. and putting our head in the sand versus allowing those emotions, feelings, all of that. Yes. Come up. Well, yeah. Come up. yeah. Well, it's like, you can't experience joy without knowing sorrow. <clears throat> like there's two ends of the spectrum, the law of polarity states that, right. And so there's an in and out, right? up and down yeah. contrast. You've got to understand what contrast is. And so there's all, you know, embrace and love all aspects of you. It's okay to feel what you're feeling and to feel angry or scared or resentful, just feel it and lean into it and then start to use the power of inquiry to just dive a little bit deeper, but just love yourself in that space too, because that's part of you too. We all have those sides to us. Of the CCs in life, my fuzzy friends, my fuzzy <laughs> friends. <laughs> Compassionate curiosity. All right, Laura Noel. I love this stretch into success and unlocking potential. What does potential mean to you? Potential is the power that's the energy, the source energy, that spirit that's locked up inside of us that we're not even aware that we have. Like, I've heard we've had so much power in our body, like we could light up a, the kilowatt hours for a city block that held up in our pinky. We have no yeah. idea what we're capable of. I mean, think about um, Einstein said, everything is energy. That's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. This is not philosophy, this is physics. So we are energy, we're a mass of energy. And you, know, you can get your aura picture taken with curly in photography and you can see that glistening beam of light that energy emanating from our body so we have no idea what potential is locked up in ourselves we just have to keep pushing and getting uncomfortable and stretching ourselves 
Um, we're never going to know it all until we're ready to assume the lotus position and ascend. You know, <laughs> there's always more growth. <laughs> Yeah, to, uh, to happen, you know, and there's aches and pains and stretches of and this is all metaphoric, my lovely people. There's there is there's stretch, there's growth pains, there's stretch pains, there's stretch yes. marks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's, there's all of it before you get into that lotus position and or, you know, it's it's the overcoming oneself and it and it's, you know, in those moments, being able to self-regulate, to have the emotional intelligence, even before that, it's, and, and I teach, it's the awareness. You have to start with the awareness. If you're in denial, if you're, your head's in the sand, I've been there because there's fear. You just, there's too much. I don't have the capacity to deal with that right now. And that's okay too. employ the CCs. I'd like to have that conversation too, because sitting in that, and I know we kind of alluded to it feeling the emotions of what's coming up in the now, but I just don't have the capacity to deal with that right now. Can we have that conversation? And, and yeah. it's, it's a big permission slip to say, you know what, that's okay. Just yeah. as long as it's not denial, it's not putting your head in the sand. There's a difference yeah. or complacency. There's a difference, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And I think no matter what choice you make, I love this when I was going through a personal development seminar as a student, they're like, put the hammer away. The one that you always beat yourself up with. I should have, uh, woulda, right? Yeah. Um, so you're like, give yourself a break, give yourself some grace, extend that grace that you would extend to others to yourself and give yourself permission <clears throat> to discern, you know, if, if I'm working on this right now, I don't, I don't feel like I have the capacity to entertain this right now. You can, put it a bow, put, put it in a box with a bow on it and put it over here. You can come back and get it later and focus on what you want to focus on. And then when, you know, when you're ready, the situation will happen or the circumstance or something will kind of, Oh, trigger that. Oh, I, okay. I, this is coming up again. Let me deal with this. Now I'm in a much better place. You'll know when the time is right. Just trust yourself. Yeah. And I think, Again, going back to the top of the hour when we were talking about boundaries and mm -hmm. having that awareness, because I am a recovering people pleaser, I, I hands down, I, I, I will never allow myself to put myself in that position again, because I've gotten really good with the boundaries and to be able to language and the audience and my clients know this because I'm a natural nurturer. I'm a natural lover. And I love that. I love that aspect about me. And I'm yeah. so keeping a hold of that. However, it's not going to be to the detriment of my worth and myself. So I reprogrammed, took out patterns and relanguaged my boundaries, just like you were talking about the capacity to, or the capacity, not addressing and having the language of compassion and curiosity, but compassion and love for yourself and the other person that you're talking to. And that could be professional and it can be personal. I think it's, it's goes both ways and yeah. having the conversation with yourself. I just, you know what I, you know, if you're talking to yourself or your, or if it's in a professional leadership capacity, you know, having that conversation with yourself, where it is authentic and genuine for you. And you can, you could probably talk to this too, as well, from a corporate cultural environment as well and setting those boundaries and, um, passing it along if it needs to, right? And being okay with that. Yeah, and I love, you know, we keep coming back to that inquiry. If you don't have the capacity to deal with something, again, give yourself some grace, but be willing to at least ask you, why don't I have the capacity to deal with this? Mm. I love one of those exercises, the five whys, because I don't have time. Why? Because I have to do this project. Why? Because I feel like I'm the only person who could do it. Why? Because <laughs> I can't rely on my team. Well, and so you'll drill down to a root yes. cause. So what's really driving this behavior, you know, because I want people to like me, you know, so whatever that is, you know, don't judge it, but then you, you have an area where you should probably focus and, and make some changes so that you do have the capacity and the time to nurture yourself. Right. And even asking yourself, um, if somebody else were in my shoes, what advice would I give to them? Yes. Take that in for a minute, guys. 
we just we just had some pearls of wisdom. I think the the five whys is a really good in the moment and also anchoring yourself um, back to what Laura was talking about at the top of the hour too, and really asking yourself, having that awareness to ask yourself, is this true? Taking the breath, being in the moment, um, finding that why within yourself and faith versus fear, right? And if fear's coming up, there you go. Ask the whys. Why, yep. why, 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 why? Because <laughs> that's you discerning too. That's you staying yep. in awareness and authentic for yourself. And it's also you standing purposeful and powerful and your potential. You're building blocks of self-confidence and potential, right? Right, right. I like even asking why and then, you know, what do I need right now too? Or what's next? Because I, I ask myself, okay, well then, okay, well, what's next? And I, and I play with myself. I'm like, okay, well, then that's not really authentic and genuine to me. And it's okay. Well, what's next? Or yes, it is. And it's juicy and sexy and I'm going for it. Right. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And that's okay. You have, and it's this, this year, for whatever reason, it's been the language. You have the permission. You have a big fat permission slip to say yes to yourself to say yes to your potential, to say yes to your worth and defining what that worth is. Define worth, define worth. And let's talk about worth, um, personal and worth and how important that is in a professional culture too, because that's really important. I mean, they all are, but yeah. For sure. Um, I think look to your results, excuse me. And you'll have an indication of what you think of yourself in terms of your worth. If you, you know, if you find yourself kind of stuck in the rat race or, you know, being the go-to person, everybody's kind of dumping all their projects and things on, you have an indication of how you feel about yourself and your worth and your time's worth on a subconscious level. Like you wouldn't consciously say, Oh, my time is less valuable than everyone else's, but that belief in your subconscious mind that you may not even be aware of that can help you dissect that a little bit. So look to your results, not in judgment, not to point the finger or be angry, but just to say, Oh, okay. I say that I believe this X, Y, and Z about myself, but my results are not congruent with how I say I see myself. Oh, that's where the work needs to be done. That's it right there. It's not congruent. It's not congruent, you guys. And that's not about beating yourself up. Again, it's not that. What'd you say earlier, Laura? Take the hammer out. Yep. Take put the hammer away. Put the hammer away. <laughs> Drop that bag. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love, love it. And it's true, even in a business, like your espoused values are not in alignment with the artifacts. And the things that you have in place, like if you have espoused values of inclusivity or um, where everybody's heard, but it's all like everybody looks the same at the board meetings. Well, your espoused values are differing from what your, what your impact is, your product is, or your, right. the result that's, you know, so what can we do to change that? What can we do to close that gap? Ooh, that's a perfect segue because I was going to ask you about eliminating non-productive habits that are holding you back. Mm, kind of yeah. great little segue, right? Yeah. Um, so I love affirmations. I think a lot of people do them incorrectly because as we know, energy is everything. Our thoughts are energy. Like energy attracts like energy, like thoughts attract like thoughts. So, but those thoughts that we, any thought that we become emotionally invested in or involved in is what shifts our energy and vibration. So feeling is the conscious awareness of the energy or vibration we're in. I feel, well, that's the energy you're in. (laughs) That's an indication. So affirmation is a great way to shift your energy when you become emotionally involved in that affirmation. So if you have a vision for an outcome, 
or you feel like you want to work on, um, I'm worthy. What's the picture that come, we think in pictures, what's the image, what would it look like when you feel worthy? <laughs> right. Yes. Who, right. Standing on the mountain, you know, yes, full of love. So imagine you're in that space and you, what does that feel like? You know, and as you're saying that I am worthy, I am worthy, I am worthy, I am worthy. And you're feeling it. You are shifting your vibration. Eventually you'll feel, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I, I've, you know, manifested X, Y, and Z. And look at these wonderful relationships I have that I didn't have before. It's and have gratitude you- for those. Cause that's an elevated emotion too. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so exactly. That's, that's, so you're shifting your vibration by shifting the feeling, but it starts with your thoughts. So simultaneously you're thinking thoughts that you want to affirm, but you're also becoming emotionally involved with them. And the repetition of doing that is what permanently shifts your energy and vibration. Something's coming up. Your personality creates your personal reality. It does. So what's going on in the feelings and the emotions and all of that? And that, you know, it's a cyclical thing, right? It, it's so if there is something going on here, if your personality is based on something, a coach told you you weren't worth back in 20 years ago, and you're still holding on to that. And that personality is still in you. You have created that personal reality in personal and business, right? Similar to what you were just saying, right? You have Mm -hmm. to have, well, one, we were saying this all along. It's the awareness and how am I showing up? And if it's in, in backing up because of the top of the hour, the conversation, the fight or flight and the nervous system, liking to remind us so much that we want to stay in that fear. We want to stay in that resentment because that's what the known is. Right. And it could be, it could be happy or, you know, the contrast, it could be happy or it could be sad. So having that awareness and looking at that and being able to discern just Laura, like you were talking about that, the discernment tools, it's really, really important because we get addicted to those chemical reactions that say, oh no, we're going to stay right here. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so juicy. Go ahead, love. No, no, I love it because it's a habit and um, you keyed in on something that I wanted to say, oh, you mentioned like a coach years ago said, you know, you can't do this or whatever. What happened? So there's two ways to change your mental programming those non-productive thought patterns. One is through repetition of a new idea with the feeling, but the other is through an emotional impact. So maybe that coach saying, oh, you're not cut out for this. Maybe that, oof, that cut you to the core. Um, And it really hurt it. it, So that might've stirred an emotional impact in you. And then that became embedded in your subconscious mind and part of your paradigm and your belief system. Yes. So, yeah. So you can change that. You know, there's a lot of personal development out there that's experiential. And I do that too, as a student. And so that's the emotional impact. Like you do these exercises, these experiential things, and you're like, Oh my God, that's, that's what I do. I'm never doing that again. And it changes you right then and there. Um, the other way is through that time spaced repetition, that affirmation that you, you know, you're emotionally involved in. Oh, you're bringing something up that a coach love her. She did for me a few years ago. And I used to have this laugh that hid everything like a nervous (laughs) that this, and it was this, and I didn't, it was a completely unconscious thing. And she lovingly said, Cause I'm that happy person. I've just, I exude energy and love and that's great. That's me. And I'm good, but I want it to also be authentic and genuine from myself and not to diminish myself. And she brought that out in me. She said, do you recognize that nervous laugh? Do you, do you know that that's, do you feel that? And I'm like, at first I kind of was like, no, you know? <laughs> 
I don't. (laughs) Right. Right. We love that. The denial and I really behave that way. No. Yep. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And, and I recognize that in other clients and friends and family. And if, if, oh, you know what? Permission, permission to have that conversation too, is really important. Meaning uh, we are coaches, we're mindset coaches, right? And I I had a conversation um, with a friend of mine and this friend was like, you don't always have to coach me. And I'm like, I'm not coaching you. This is how I show up in life. This is me. This is it. And I I bring this up because all of us in the field, this is how we show up. However, I will also say if somebody's asking me a question about mindset, about discernment, about that, I I will say, do I have your permission? Because I'm asking that nervous system. Do I have permission (laughs) to give you the real tools, right? I think that's yeah. a really important conversation. Laura, go ahead, love. Yeah, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I'm, I'm very cognizant of, you know, when I first started doing this and really getting into this information, um, being aware of how people would react when I was enthusiastically sharing, <laughs> <laughs> totally, dropping, the, dropping totally. the knowledge and you're like, oh my God, that person looks like they're glazing over or, <laughs> you know, I, so just being aware of who I can share it with and who I can love and, and enjoy time with. But if they ask me a question, I love that asking permission, but I've also, because I'm in a, uh, a psychology program right now in a doctoral program. Mm. And so it's a bunch of psychologists together. And I remember there was a coach in one of the, the groups and I, you know, I'm a coach too. And she would always enthusiastically jump in and interrupt and coach. And it, it, it was irritating because I wasn't asking to be coached. Yeah. I was just working out something, you know, and, yeah. and so we, there's a delicate line between coaching somebody and empowering them. We don't want to clip their wings. No, you know, no. Yeah. And I, and I think that's really important. It's an important conversation having that permission. Yeah. Cause I know it, and you get so enthusiastic and, and there, there's an old proverb about, there, I, I don't remember where it comes from, but um, it's it's the two monks and they're walking along the road and there's a big chunk of gold bullion right there. And all everybody's walking by it, but you see its value. You see its value, but nobody's picking it up. You know, it's and I may have butchered that, but you kind of get where I'm yeah. going with this. There's there's yeah. so much value, but you you know, when you're ready to pick up the gold, you're ready to pick it up, ready to yeah. hear it. And I can tell you from experience, and I'm sure you resonate with this, you can hear one thing from somebody and five other people are hearing something completely different or they're not, right? Yeah. 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 It's like, you know, people have to be willing and have the desire to shift and be supported. Um, And we can't rescue. We can't do the work for them. It's everybody's own journey. Oh yeah. Or enable. No enabling. Yeah. No. Holding yep. space, being a good listener, asking permission, big fat permission slip. Laura, we are going to wrap it up. Laura Noel, we have got, we've had a great conversation. The five whys, changing it, repetition, emotional impact, plan of action, <laughs> landing on your purpose. You can all unlock your potential with Laura Noel. All the information is going to be on the links in the newsletter, on the website. You can go to, where do you want them to go? Stretch into success. You want um, if you go to stretch into success.com backslash gratitude, there's Wonderful. a page right there for your listeners. We can connect on a call. There's some goodies on there. Um, ah. I'd love to connect with you. So guys, that was your call to action. Did you hear that? <laughs> stretch into success.com forward slash gratitude. Go get some good juicy yumminess. We love you guys, Laura. Thank you so much, Benny. Thank you, Thank you love.